That was really lovely. And thank you um, for inviting me to come here. I'm really happy to be here and also very happy to be talking with Tony. So thanks again for the introduction. Yes, thank you. Um, Can everybody hear OK? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, it's such a pleasure to be here with Molly. Um, I actually first read, I think it was the first short story in here about four years ago um, in a workshop uh, in Breadloaf. Well, that's Breadloaf. great. Um, and I remember thinking, thinking this was, was amazing. I can't wait to read what comes next. And um, this is just such a brilliant book um, that uh, <coughs> you have the, the opportunity to, to chat about it. Um, I was thinking when I was, when I was reading this that a lot of short story collections you read sort of feel like they're structured like a pop record where you have, you have your hits up front and then sort of the, some of the weaker numbers buried in the middle and then you end with a slow, sad acoustic song. Um, but this, this feels like it's a much more deliberate um, and methodical um, and sort of cohesive uh, or organizational structure that um, that these ideas of, it's called the Un-Americans, and, and, and um, so many of the characters are trapped in between um, places. Um, and the, these themes of, of exile and repatriation, of, of confession and, and, and uh, um, or withstanding um, interrogation, um, sort of feed into one another. Um, and I was interested maybe in, in starting off with this idea of, of how you actually collected these stories. Yeah, it was something that I, um, I didn't know. I, did, I actually didn't know how to put the book together when I first started. I felt with this book that I was just trying so hard um, to do something really different with each story. Like I would, each one of these stories took me about a year, and so I would be sort of like so exhausted by the time I finished one that I would just want to be with a completely different narrator in a completely different place in a totally different situation for the next story. And because of that, I did have this fear, maybe like halfway into the book, like, wow, is this going to be too all over the place? Like, is there is this, you know, they're not collected together by, um, setting or by voice um, as it is in a lot of the story collections I love. Like I feel like in like a Lori Moore collection, for example, like even if you took her name off of all the stories, you would know like, oh, those are Lori Moore stories. And, and I love that and I admire that so much, but I felt with my collection that it was almost like I was just trying these really different voices and different ideas with each story that I wondered how it would come together. Um, and I remember I was, um, I was sitting in, um, when I was a Stegner Fellow, I was like in Elizabeth Talent's office after, um, after workshopping a story, and I said, Elizabeth, I feel like these stories are so different. How will they come together? And she said, oh, Molly, they're all about politics, and they're all about family. And she said it like, of course. <laughs> and it was this thing where until she said it, I had just never thought about that very, very basic thing. I think because it was almost like I had too myopic a view of the, of the project. And so as soon as she said that, then I was able to think about the, the thematic overlap. And once I realized that, um, for so many of my characters, it's this idea of like, what happens if you dedicate your life to something and then it loses relevance in the course of world events and you have to figure out what's next for you? And is there a feeling of um, kind of like nostalgia for really dark times because you held a place in those events? And once I knew that that was happening thematically, then I was able to think about how the story could kind of, all the stories could speak to each other. After, after sort of recognizing the, these, these um these motifs and, and themes that, that run throughout the collection, um, could you, did you sort of reverse engineer it back to the, the, the origin of interest, or where these ideas originally came from, or, or your um, maybe initial interest in, in, in this sense of, of these, these lifelong pursuits being shattered by, by wider historical changes? I think they just sort of happened naturally. Um, I think it's it's funny. Like I, I think even in trying to do so many different things in the book, like trying really hard to to write from the point of view of men and women, young and older, and you know, an American and you know, an Israeli and European, it's like it's all still coming from me. So it's still all autobiographical, and it's still just whatever I'm obsessed with and what I'm thinking about all the time. And there's just no way to, to stop that from happening. And so I think without realizing it, those themes just kept rippling through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it was only when I started to put the book together that I that it's funny that you brought up the album because I did kept I kept thinking about it as an album as I was putting it together. Like this idea of okay, if I have these kind of slower, more melancholy stories, when do I want to have that poppier thing go in? And mm -hmm. I was really thinking about it like an album as I put it together. Mm -hmm. So which ones would be would be the singles? 
The singles? <laughs> it, it got, oh, I don't know. I mean, to be honest, you know, I spent so long on this book that I feel like the ones that I wasn't happy with, they just ended up on the cutting room floor. Yeah. So it really was, it, it was that way for me. And I'm not saying that they're all, that every anyone else reading it would think that they're all singles, but it was just this feeling of like, for me, I thought, okay, with each one of these, this is, this is the most that I can do with this story. Mm -hmm. um, and the ones that ended up on the floor, and there were a lot of those, um, I found it was ever, like, whenever I came up with an idea rather than a character, like, if I started with the concept and it was me kind of trying to be clever, then it would just kind of buckle and die and mm -hmm. that would end up on the floor. Did those also, were they also of the same, um, coming from the same sort of thematic um, soil? Or, or, or the ones that, that didn't, didn't make it in here, did, did they um, sort of veer totally off, off of, of course? I think it was the opposite. I think they veered too directly on course. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but the stories that, that I kept in the book, they um, they just felt sort of alive and it's kind of scary when I was writing them because I didn't know wh where they were going or what they were going to do. And with the ones that, um, that didn't make it in, it was almost like I had a concept that would fit the book. And because of that, it just didn't have like as much juice to me when I was writing. Mm -hmm. um, or it would be me kind of being clever because I could think of something thematically Okay, I would think of something um, that thematically would fit so neatly, but it felt too neat. And those were the ones that I was less excited about. Yeah. Um, all of these stories um, have, have some degree of, of research that, that is, is, is necessary, whether it's um, sort of <coughs> contemporary Ukraine or, um, or World War II um, Belarus. How did how did you go about balancing um, the, the sort of uh, the requirements of, of creating a world that may very well be be foreign to your reader in terms of the internal logic, the um, the sort of governing um, principles of, of that that universe, but at, at the same time, um, um, sort of never showing showing your research, never showing the seams of it, like. At no point in in in, uh, in any of these stories did I ever feel like this isn't how um, this narrator would present it. I never felt like I was being explicitly, you know, pointed out. Oh, this is is um, this is the day that that you know uh, the Molotov Ribbon drop uh -huh. fact was was dissolved or, or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, that that everything feels very close to to the ground. Um, how did you go about achieving that? Oh, thank you. That means a lot to me, coming from you, that you didn't feel the research and it didn't feel um, done that way. I think that all those, I think if I were writing about something that I didn't have a connection to, it, the research might show. Um, but with all of the stories, you know, I, I spend sort of part of the year in, in Israel, and so those stories didn't very, require very much research. And um, with all of the ones, like the McCarthy era ones, they're very much you know, pulled from my family history. And then the Eastern Europe ones, it's, you know, where my family was from, and it's just so I feel like there were all of these questions that were always kind of percolating even before I was writing. And I think I'm also just a big nerd. So I think like when I'm like when I'm home, I'm you know, it's like I love to read nonfiction, I love documentaries, and that was the stuff I was just going to be trying to learn about anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, and so it was more like the character questions just arose from the stuff that I was reading about rather than like the idea of searching out research in like some part of the world that I hadn't thought a lot about. Mm -hmm. Um, but once I started to write the stories, yeah, I mean, they required so much research. I traveled for almost all of them. I would apply for grants. Um, I, I mean, I feel like, and, and, I, and I'd be curious what you think, like, I, you know, as someone who I imagine also did a lot of research for your book, because I think there's that feeling of feeling like you need to know everything that your reader would know, and you have to have your reader trust you and really believe that you know what you're talking about, but then you also don't want to ever act like you know what you're talking about, because then it feels authorial. So at least for me, it's that feeling of doing all of the research and feeling sort of overwhelmed by the research. And then once you know who the people are, it's just shucking all of that away until basically so much of the work that you've done, all of the work informs the character and everything that doesn't inform the character just has to end up on the floor. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, that uh, I, I had a similar experience, I think, where, um, where anything that wasn't directly related to a character's sort of situation or emotional entanglement or whatever mm -hmm. was, was extraneous. So, um, so my, my novel is set in, in Chechnya, and, and, and so anything um, that wasn't directly related to the, you know, the lives of these characters um, um, ended up getting edited out. So, so all of the larger political um, 
and, and military operations and, and all of that um, was, was sort of uh, beside the point almost. Mm -hmm. um, but it almost felt like at some, at some points it seems like when you're, um, when you're writing a, a novel that, that or, or um, excuse me, a, a short story that, that does rely on, on research or it's replacing the reader in, in a situation where um, they wouldn't, they don't, they perhaps don't really have any, they're not bringing um, many expectations to the table. Um, yeah. It's almost, it almost seems like you're, you're, you're writing either a historical um, or, or a sci-fi or some sort of genre fiction in, 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 in how you have to world build, where you have to create the, um, um, not only, you know, an interesting story and dynamic characters and, and something that, that, you know, is pulling the reader through, but, um, but sort of the, the logic of, of that, that place and time um, in a way that, that sort of adds another layer of, of complexity to, to the work, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but you mentioned, you mentioned uh, um, the McCarthy era, and uh, one of the, I, I almost feel, feel like, like there's, there's paired up stories in here almost, and one of my favorite is, is um, The Quietest Man, um, which is um, this beautiful story about this, uh, this man in Prague who, um, who withstands uh, four days of, of intense interrogation, and he's um, he's uh, he, he he comes to America, and he's not a very good father. And his daughter is writing this play um, about his life, and, and he's terrified that you know it's going to be about how he's such a, a, a bad father, and um, and he doesn't want her, her to write it. And, it. and it turns out that she's writing this play about about his his interrogation and how he didn't name names. Um, and then you had this 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 sort of uh, a similar um, um, father um, child story set in San Francisco, mm -hmm. um, in which the son of, of Russian immigrants who fled the, the Soviet Union um, is also involved in in, in uh, uh, interrogation and in, 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 in the uh, um, McCarthy era shenanigans. Um, how did you uh, how did you did did you intentionally sort of create this this these these entwined stories almost, or um, the, the idea of of of, of interrogation um, and this sort of shame based um, uh, political coercion, uh, mm -hmm. both both in Eastern Europe and, and in America, um, seems like a fascinating uh, entanglement. And I, I was just interested in how how that all came about. You know, I think it wasn't, it wasn't something that I was aware of. It was only when I had the stories done and I had them on the floor and I was trying to figure out the order that I started to realize um, the thematic overlap. And I think with, um, with those two stories, with um, the second one that um, you were talking about, The Unknown Soldier, what was really interesting for me, I think with that story began, I was talking to my mom about um, my grandfather who had been really active in the Communist Party. And we just had this really like intense and really interesting conversation about what it was like for my grandfather to realize what was actually happening in Russia. Like here's this, you know, this cause that he's devoted his life to, you know, his children lived under such intense surveillance because of his politics. And what was it like to actually, in that moment, just psychologically to, to first learn about the gulags and learn about everything that was happening and think like, wow, was this, you know, was this a mistake? And, and I thought about that on one side and what, and, and what, um, what that would be like. And then also in The Quietest Man, what it's like to have risked your life in your mother country for all of these politics and then come over and people just aren't really even interested in them at a certain point. You know, like the, you know, communism is over and no one's celebrating him anymore. So I was just sort of interested in these different sort of ending moments of politics in the political lives of these different people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in terms of your question about the, um, the overlap that happens in, or some of the thematic overlap, I think it's the way that I write the stories which is that with every one of the stories, like I would throw myself into the story and everything was going great and I'm feeling really excited and then I would just hit this wall, like usually like maybe like two thirds into the draft and just be like, oh my God, I'm so depressed. I can never finish the story. I'm stuck at this wall. I can't, I can't figure out my way around it and I'm stuck. And I would feel sad and then I would start to kind of like cheat on that story with a new story. And I'm like, oh, I just can't write this story anymore. I can't figure it out. And then I would, 
move to story B. And so I would still have some of these ideas in my mind and I'd still be tackling some of these problems, but I'm suddenly working with a new set of characters and with a new setting. And it would become this thing, and it was the way that I wrote the whole book, where I would like <coughs> cheat on story A with tr story B, and story B would feel super exciting and <laughs> sexy and fun, and then I would hit the same wall with story B, and I'd be like, wait, but story A was actually full of promise, and I actually have a newfound love for story A, and then I would go back to story A and finish it, and then I would do that. And that was the way I wrote the whole book. And so I think that um, because of that, that's the way that I think some of those waves were happening. Mm -hmm. That's. Um...